Hello everybody and thank you for joining me on this new video presentation. Before starting the presentation, I would like to invite you to visit my website for interesting EP cases and also the highlight of the latest top published articles in the field of cardiology, electrophysiology and digital health. The patient is a 38 year old man who was referred to our hospital because of frequent palpitations and monomorphic extrasystole for the past 12 months. Antiarrhythmic drugs had been ineffective and he had no history of cardiovascular disease. Several ECG features like QRS duration, QRS axis, precordial transition, and bundle branch block pattern are relevant for localization of ventricular arrhythmia from outflow tract. So this is an interesting schema to understand the ECG patterns of outflow tract ventricular arrhythmias. The free valve of the RVOT is the most anterior structure and precordial transition becomes progressively earlier as we move toward the anterolateral mitral annulus. Lead one polarity allows to discriminate between structures located leftward from the midline from those located on the right side. Here is the baseline ECG of the patient. The PVC has left bundle branch block pattern with late transition, which suggests an origin from right outflow tract. The positive one suggests that the origin is on the right side of the midline, which is the posterior outflow tract, and notching means that most probably this PVC originates from the free wall of the right outflow tract. So this is an interesting study intended to prospectively evaluate the value of dedicated ECG posterior leads to create an anterior-posterior ratio to localize PVCs between the right and the left ventricular outflow tracts for catheter ablation. So in this study, a standard V5 and V6 leads were placed posteriorly. The site of successful ablation was correlated with the ratio of the R wave in V4 to the R wave in the V8. And normalization of the V4-V8 ratio to a V4-V8 index was achieved by dividing the PVC V4-V8 ratio by V4-V8 ratio during sinus rhythm. As we can see here with more left far and posterior progression, a gradient of decreasing R wave is seen in posterior V8 lead. So this study showed us that a simple modification of V5 to V8 posteriorly may provide incremental diagnostic value for localizing PVCs arising from left and right outflow tracts. In addition, normalizing PVC localization criteria to the sinus rhythm results in the highest specificity when compared with other validated criteria as shown in this table. Here we see the three-dimensional mapping of the RVOT in RAO and LAO projections showing the earliest point, the best pace mapping, and the successful ablation site at the posterior part of the RVOT free wall. And finally, this figure shows the pacing correlation mapping in RAO projection. As you can see here, the area with a pace mapping score over 93% equals 3.3 square centimeter. And this is one of the reasons for limited efficacy of pace mapping guided ablation in patients with vanishing PVC during catheter ablation procedures. So finally, in the coming slides, I would like to present some interesting articles related to this content. And I would like to thank you again for joining me and hope to have you here in my future video presentations. Thank you.